Well, howdy, folks, and welcome to Mower Mike's Garage. Specifically, we are coming at you live from the Mower Mike Gymnasium. Yes, the workout center. This is where I get all my strength to work on all those heavy lawn mowers. Now, what we're going to do, what we're going to talk about today, is how to insulate a bathtub. Yeah, I know this is as far from fixing lawn mowers as we get, but it's the internet. I can do anything I want. So. I'm gonna show you how to insulate the bathtub. Now what we've got here, this isn't my cold plunge build. I've got a whole separate video on how to make the coolest, best cold plunge on the interweb. So I'll put a link down below. Uh, but the task here today is to insulate this bathtub. And what it is, it's a 67 inch freestanding bathtub. It's the Woodbridge, Woodbridge version. I got off the Amazon straight to my door. I'll put a link down below. Uh, but it's an awesome bathtub. And what I want to do, I want to insulate the walls, cap, insulate everything on this bathtub so the cold water stays frigid. But also, if you're installing this bathtub for like regular hot baths, uh, you can do the same method. Now, how are we going to do it? First of all, we are going to do it with foam. I got this cool, cool foam gun, and we're going to do construction foam. Now, First thing to do is we got to get underneath it because get access to the air gap in here that we're going to insulate. We got to get underneath it, which is where my cold plunge design comes in handy because we've got quick disconnects on this bad boy. And we're just going to turn it around and flip it upside down. Ow! <laughs> now, when you flip her upside down, make sure to flip it on the non-jet side because we don't want to damage those jets. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. All right. We're, all right. Now we've got her upside down. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and we're going to go ahead and start pumping some foam in here. And be careful. <laughs> those little clips, I actually cut myself pretty good. So let's come on in underneath her and uh, let's check it out. All right, kids, before we start making an absolute mess pumping construction foam, let's talk about the tools. Now, I know you're probably used to the Great Stuff construction foam that's already got the nipple on the end. We are not going that route uh, for several reasons. First of all, when we get underneath this bathtub, you're going to see we're going to have to slide really deep up her skirt to get around the side of it because it's a really thin gap, about two inches, and we got to go about two feet deep in there to start laying our foam and that little nozzle is just not going to work. So what I have got here, this is a professional foam spray gun. It was only like 25 bucks on Amazon and it looks awesome. So this is going to give us, first of all, it's going to give us the length we need. Then we've got a 24 inch thingy on it, a nozzle, and also it's going to give us great control over the amount of foam that we're going to spray in there. So when you get it, make sure to get the Great Stuff Pro Series. I've gone with the gaps and cracks. Now, I have made probably 20 videos on pumping construction foam into lawnmower tires. There's a whole series on it. So I really think that makes me a qualified expert to talk about foam. So going to gaps and cracks, it's going to allow that expansion a little, little faster and allow it to expand a little lighter, which will give us more air pockets and better insulation. Yep, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. So the first thing is you're going to go ahead and screw it on here. But before you do it, Make sure to turn that counter, I mean, turn it clockwise to shut the whole thing down. And I'll show you why in a minute. And when you screw it on, let's go fast. Go fast. You're going to feel it resist. There we go. That's why you go fast because the stuff, oh, great. That is not, that is not what it looked like online. All right. We're going to have to take it off. As you see, I totally screwed this up and cross-threaded the whole thing. All right. When you screw it on there, make sure to get the threads right. All right, so we got it on there. The second time went much, much better, and we've got a bit of a mess on our hands, but that's all right. The other thing, I'm gonna have to pump this out a little sooner, is we got our foam cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little, a little shot here. I'm not quite sure how that works. Maybe, there you go. I'm just gonna clean it off. One thing you'll notice on this foam is that it gets very hard to clean once it dries. And you really don't want to get this stuff on your hands because it, it, uh, it sticks. So, all right, that is your amateur job of installing <laughs> the can on here. Hopefully the rest of this video uh, doesn't go like that just went. 
but we never know. This is my first time to use a foam gun, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Now, the initial thing I've read online, sorry, my hands are all bloody, I got all cut up, is that we want to unscrew this. What this is, this is your control, and it's gonna allow you to pull that trigger further. And the further you pull that trigger, the more foam we're gonna get. So I'm gonna start with just one turn out, counterclockwise, and that should give us a small bead, and we're gonna go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this over there. We're gonna do a test before we start pumping, and then we're gonna make more of a mess. Stay with me. All right, gang, we are ready to start pumping some foam. I cleaned up all the blood off my hand. Uh, so we're gonna do a few test runs on some cardboard to take a look at the bead. Now I've got a one, one turn out, and let's see what that gives us. Look at that, that's not a bad bead. Let's do another turn. This is so cool. Look at that, I think that's about perfect. You do wanna shake up the can beforehand. I can see, that looks awkward. Does that look awkward, honey? Or should I do it with one hand? <laughs> okay, because that mixes up the foam. All right, that is a great, great bead. So, come over here. And as you're gonna see, you're gonna see the reason for this long handle. So I'm gonna start going around the tub. Yep, this is awkward. And we're just gonna start foaming it. You can see, that's really not a big enough bead. We're gonna go ahead and undo it a couple more times. There we go. So we got a three turner bead. Boy, this is, this is really working way better than I ever thought it'd be. So we're gonna have to get around there. I can see it's just going in there, folks. So good. Come on, a little tight there. <laughs> Come on, just shove it in there as deep as you can. You can see on this side, it's getting a little tight. And gang, this is not an exact science, but do try to keep your foam under control as you go around. Oh my gosh. As you see, you get a lot more space as you come around the corners here, like so. And we are, we're definitely shooting foam. I think this is so cool that these standalone tubs have a gap on them like this. And I was taking a look at the plunge tubs, and this is all they do. They just get a cheap dang bathtub and then foam around the sides. And they don't even have drains. So, ah, oh, I can see that's tight there too. <laughs> All right, folks, so just shove it down in there as far as you can and just keep, keep working it, keep working it. You're gonna run into those jets, but my design on my cold tub allows those jets to be insulated from this foam situation. So there we go. And just do it layer after layer. I think we're gonna need several foam bottles, but you can see we're we're filling up that gap pretty good. So, all right, well, I'm gonna keep doing this and we're gonna see how this goes. And I'm pretty sure we'll need all the cans of foam we can get. All right, so stay with me and let's uh, fast forward. I think I've got my method to figure out. What I did, I twisted this back about 10 times just to max out the gun. And then you see here, we're getting a much thicker, better layer of foam going around here. And also, I suggest doing just one part at a time. And then we'll move to each part of the tub instead of, instead of trying to trip over that thing. It seems like this method works a lot better. And just take your time. I think that's the most important part. That way you get a good thick layer. So, all right, I'm gonna keep on foaming and if I learn something new, I'll let you know. <laughs> all right, gang, I wanna show you the results. This actually worked way better than I ever thought it would be. This is after exactly three cans of that Great Stuff Pro Spray Foam. And it's cool because the three can pack is what it comes on Amazon and gang, it looked perfect. Look at that, it's just filling that gap all the way down. So this way you have an insulated barrier between the outside of the tub and the inside. And that's why I love these tubs because you got a gap here. You've got a gap for insulation and also it's a whole separate video but also installed a drain that can go to a water hose for my cold tub. So, all right, so next we're going to insulate the bottom of the tub. I didn't want to do it with that spray foam just because it was a little funky. I think there's probably some better options out there. So stay with me and uh, we'll, we'll get this thing nice and frosty. All right, before we go on, let's go ahead and take care of our tool. I can see 
that foam made an absolute mess. If you leave this on there, it comes like concrete. So what we've got here, this is very important, the foam cleaner bottle. I did notice that carb cleaner does the same thing and it's got a little thing right there. Push on there. So I think that'll allow us to, uh, oh yeah, look at that. So just spray it on there. Well, don't get it into uh, the cylinder of a chainsaw. You don't want that. But you can see right there, it's gonna go ahead and allow us to try to clean that stuff off. You can see the foam is just disgusting. But the biggest point, make sure to get that tip in there. Let's see if that'll, oh man, that's gross. I got my foam gum all nasty. But that goes ahead and cleans her off. And then we want to clean out the inside of the gun. Now you can leave it charged like this and it'll be just fine. You don't have to clean out the inside of the gun. Just make sure you get the tip. But since I already got an empty can on here, I am going to go ahead and then you screw this on here like so. Real quick. And we're going to shoot the cleaner through the gun. But first find something to shoot your gun into. You see right here, I went ahead and grabbed the wife's ramen noodle <laughs> thing. And there you go, clean it. Make sure to wear some uh, goggles like I don't have. You wanna, golly, this stuff. Okay, yeah, it's getting everywhere. All right, yeah, this works great. <laughs> you probably shouldn't do this outside. So go ahead and spray it a few times. Uh, make sure you have ventilation because this stuff stinks. All right, let's get back to the fun part. All right, gang, we've got great insulation around the edges, as you can see, but next we need to insulate this large area on the bottom. Now, my high school education tells me that cold goes down. So if we don't insulate this, I think we could lose a lot. And originally I thought I'd do some sort of spray foam, but I don't think that exists. So what we've gone with is just the stock gaps and cracks. This is the non-pro version, and it's just got a little... A little thing you screw on right there and you can see why we couldn't use this for the main areas and I'm just gonna go around and foam her up so let's see how she works and just see several <laughs> she's a, she's coming out hot day Wow that is a, a serious foam go quick quick strokes folks quick strokes the foam is coming out <laughs> Good thing we didn't use this around the edges because this foam is kind of wild. So I'm going to go ahead and foam up everything underneath here with our new foam. And just be careful. This stuff, folks, is coming out hot. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll see what the after effects are. <laughs> All right, folks, I think I'm getting my method down. You're going to notice we do quick side-to-side -side strokes like so. And as this foam, there she goes. She likes it upside down. Look at that. Now this foam is really, really sticky. So keep your hands away and just go over the whole thing against the bare tub. This is working way better than I ever thought it'd be. <laughs> All right, gang, let's check out our foam spraying handiwork. And this came out way better than I ever would have expected. If we look around, we even got a color combo. We got the orange foam on the outside and that orange foam did really good because it didn't expand quite as fast as the white foam, which is perfect for the outside. And then the white foam on the inside, and it just did perfect. I mean, you can see it's really sticky, it's hard. And a couple of things, just make sure to let this sit overnight. It needs at least eight hours to cure. You don't wanna tip this thing over before it's cured and, and make a foamy mess. And also, if you get any foam around here, I found a little piece of Scotch-Brite pad. Uh, cleans it up real nice. And yes, that is an original Astros Astrodome bat from the 80s when the Astros were awesome. So with that, we're going to go ahead and flip this tub back side, right side, right side over. And we're going to talk about insulating the other elements of the cold plunge along with we're going to look at what type of top we can put on this sucker to cover up. So stay with me. All right, now we got her all insulated on the inside like a Yeti cup. What we're going to do, we're going to go to the outside of the tub. Now, specifically, this is going to be for any type of exterior piping. What I've got here is an awesome cold plunge. I'll put a link below on how to build the cold plunge out of this tub. 
Uh, but we want to go ahead and insulate this. What we've got, we've got three quarter inch uh, just rubber tubing that came from the Penguin Chiller cold tub kit. And remember that when your cold tub's just sitting there, it's going to have cold water here. And this is definitely an area that would benefit from insulation. So what I found is some of this uh, one inch interior uh, piping here off the Amazon and it's pretty awesome stuff. It's got a kind of a rigid outside and all you do, you just slide it in there and you just wiggle it down. But just make sure to get the right size on the inside of your pipe. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just slide it down. You can go ahead and slice it real easy all the way or you can unhook it and slide it down there. So it's not rocket science. I'm gonna let you figure this out. And next we're gonna go to the top because we got a big hole on the top. We gotta figure out what to do with. All right, gang, we have got this cold plunge sealed up. You can see we got the, the line sealed. We've got the tub shell sealed up, tight, foamed up. Uh, but there's one problem. We've got this gigantic hole on the top of the tub where all the cold is going to come out. Now, I put a lot of thought into this. At first, I thought we'd build some sort of custom cover, get out my saws and my glue and this and that. But when you start doing that, it gets heavy. And I wanted to do something simple that you can buy straight to your house. So I went on the Amazon and you know, the Amazon's got everything. Straight from China, what you can do, you can custom order a pad. Now these are meant for benches, uh, small beds, but it's a foam pad. And you can put the exact dimensions you want in there. It takes about six weeks to get all the way from Shanghai, China. Uh, but I tell you what, it worked out perfect. This one in particular, I think it's four or five inches thick. Uh, I, I'll put the dimensions down below. I forgot what it is and I got a vinyl cover on it. It was about 140, 50 bucks. But look at this thing. All you got to do is slide it on top and voila, that's it. And it looks like it's a professional cover. I mean, this looks awesome. So I'll put the Amazon link down below where you can order your own. Now let's say you're cheap. You want to save a little money, but you want something fast. You're American, right? Well, this here is what we call a narrow twin mattress. So it's 75 inches by 30 inches wide. And this is cheaper. I bought this for $80 on Amazon. You can see it doesn't look quite as cool, but <laughs> tell you what, this sucker will seal it up. The tub itself is 32 inches wide. Uh, the interior is 29. So at 30 inches, it barely hangs on the edge, but you can see it, it does work, folks, and you can take a quick shop nap on it. This is a very, very comfortable pad. But for me, I am going custom. I really think it's worth the extra weight. Well, we got pads flying everywhere to do this. And the vinyl cover, you can pick which cover you want, which color. I mean, it's actually really, really slick. Uh, that's what we're going to go with. All right, so this thing is sealed up. And I'll tell you what. I had it set at 39 overnight and 14 hours later, it only went up to like 45. So you're barely losing any temperature out of this sucker. So I highly recommend doing this. And something else I noticed is that any exposed area on these pipes, uh, you can see right there, they create a lot of condensation. So if you don't have the inside sealed up and you don't have any type of cover, you're gonna end up with pools and pools of water. So insulation is very key, especially on these super strong cold plunges. And if you're interested in cold plunges, I've got an amazing cold plunge build where I built this thing. Go through all the details. I'll put a link below. So get yourself in some cold water or uh, seal up your, your bathtub with a wife and press her. Uh, it it's actually works pretty good. So with that, more mics out. I promise I got a chainsaw video for you all next. We are not going to do bathtub videos for a little while. <laughs> yeah, more mics workshop here. Santa, the Santa Claus? This is Santa Claus? Oh my gosh. Hey, hey Santa. Well, busy time of year, right? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, oh, you don't say. Oh, oh, it's all about the children. Yeah, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can see where that, that gets a little weird, a little awkward. All right. Santa, you can rely on me. Yes, sir. I, 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 will, uh, I will carry out your wish. It is, tis the season. A Merry Christmas, Santa. Mm hmm. All right. Catch you next year. <laughs> Folks, hot dang. I just got. A telephone call from the North Pole. Santa, he's very busy, but he, uh, he made some time to call me and say, Mower Mike, you need to lay off the awkward bathtub videos. So we're not going to do any more awkward bathtub videos for a little while. I'm going to go back to the bread and butter. We're going to do some chainsaw videos, 
uh, maybe a three-wheeler, motorcycles, mowers. So we're going to have some more fun. Uh, so till next year, y'all have a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. More mics out. See you next time.